endued with the Holy Ghost from ministry. Should we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the great opportunity to be right here in your presence, to exalt your holy name. We magnify you because you alone are God and you alone have words of eternal life. We want to ask you today, Father, to open our hearts and uh, give us what we need. Strengthen ourselves that we continue serving you and uh, we may yield much fruit for your glory. In Jesus' name, we ask you to give us a mighty spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Speak to our hearts. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You may sit, please. Endued with the Holy Ghost for ministry. What is a ministry? What is the meaning of ministry? The real meaning for ministry is service or function. To serve. Specific service is called a ministry. We are speaking about ministry within the church because there are ministries on the secular life as well. Normally you will find a lot of ministries in the governments. You will have ministry of education and different ministries. But we are going to speak about ministry in church. Ministry in the Lord. Here in church for a ministry to be fruitful, it must be a direct calling from God. The whole church, everyone is involved in service because we are called to serve. The whole church is involved in ministry. But remember that there are specific ministries given by God, which is described in the book of Ephesians in chapter 4. And it speaks about some specific ministries the Lord will give to the church so the church can be built, edified. And after being built and edified, the whole church then go out and continue the global ministry of the church, the global service. So this ministry that we are speaking about here is this specific ministry that is called upon in Ephesians chapter 4 and verses 11 and 12. When it says, God gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some teachers, some pastors. These specific ministries must be a direct calling of God. To see a need... Because you have a eyes you may see. You have an understanding you may understand. To see a need and to answer to that need not necessarily means 
that I received a calling from God. I will say it again. To see a need because there are always people who see the need. I hope you can see the need. But to see a need and to answer to that need not necessarily means that is a calling from God. A calling from God is in God's hand, in His sovereignty. He is the one who decides, not you, not me, not the church, not pastors, not any minister is the one who decides, but a real ministry to be fruitful must be a direct calling of God. Then the question, Pastor, then should and I answer to the needs? Yes, answer to the needs. If you see there is a need for preaching the gospel in this place, preach the gospel. But that doesn't mean that because you preach, you are an apostle or you are a prophet or you are a pastor or you are an evangelist or any other thing. Because you may see in the church a lot of people with great abilities and with a great heart and burden for God who normally do a lot of service and may God bless every single member of the church who is ready to serve because that is important. But that doesn't mean that is a direct calling from God. That is your answer to the need. And uh, for sure everyone should answer to the need. But that doesn't mean you are called directly by God into full time ministry. That is what I want to make clear. And the word of God says... It is not on the one who runs. It is not up to the one who wishes. It is on God who has mercy. So I just want to show you right here. When there is not a calling from God, the ministry, which means service or function, could be there but not the divine support or backing up to see supernatural results. So whenever we answer to a need, but there is not a real calling from God to ministry, the service, the function could be there, but not the divine support that will bring supernatural results. So you cannot be a pastor because you want to be a pastor. You are not a pastor because you went to the seminar and you studied. Or you are not a pastor because you help the pastor to preach in church. Or maybe you went out and you prayed for the sick and they got healed, it doesn't mean the Lord has already called you to be a pastor or an evangelist or any other thing. It is your service. You see what the word of God says in the book of Acts? There were some deacons in the church and they came out to supply the need and they preached. And the Lord did a lot of wonders and miracles. And even people outside there couldn't stand the anointing, the power with the which these deacons used to preach. But they were still deacons. 
they were not apostles. That is what I want to make clear to you. When you have a direct calling from God, you will know it. Because it is God who will deal with you, not people. Now, when a ministry is given by God, he will anoint the minister with the Holy Ghost. There is a big difference. When there is a ministry given by God, he will anoint the minister with the Holy Ghost. Because Every believer has the right to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Every single believer. John the Baptist said, behind me comes one who will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. And that is good. You should ask from God the anointing, the blessing of the Holy Spirit upon your life. But what I am making clear here is that there is a special anointing for ministry, which is not the same anointing we receive as believers, as members of the church with the full right to be baptized with the Holy Ghost because you have the full right to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And not only you have the full right to receive it, but you must wish or long for it and yourself. But when it comes to real ministry, direct calling from God, then there will be special anointing for that ministry, which is something different. In the book of Acts chapter 9, you have the case of Saul. In verse 11, the Lord said to Saul, because he was Saul before he became Paul, is the same man. The Lord said to him when he fell to the ground, you enter into the city, and in verse 11, the Lord says to a man called Ananiah, Go into the street which is called Straight and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth and has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. And then it says in verse 17, And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, who appeared unto you in the way as you came, has sent me that you might receive the your sight and you might be filled with the Holy Ghost. But strange as it may appear, the day, the same day the Lord saved Saul, the same day he called him into ministry. Because let me tell you something, the calling into ministry is not by chance. I want you to have that clear in your mind. The calling, the direct calling of God into ministry is not by chance. It is not because you pray more. Because the calling into ministry comes from eternity. The Lord told Jeremiah before, before I form you in your mother's womb, I knew you. 
before you were born, I already gave you as a prophet to the nations. So it is in God's sovereignty. It is not something that happens by chance. Because you learn more. Because you did more. It is something that comes from the throne of God. Maybe some people are looking at me in a strange way. I'm speaking about direct calling of God into ministry. It is not by chance. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus told the apostles to stay at Jerusalem until they would receive the Holy Spirit. Chapter 1, you have always read that chapter. Chapter 1 in the book of Acts of the Apostles. The Lord told them, turn, go from Jerusalem, stay here until you receive the promise of my Father. So the anointing of the Holy Ghost is so important. Let us see some examples. I would like to see some examples. Some people who were anointed by God for specific ministries of functions. David. He was anointed as king. Elisha was anointed as prophet. Aaron, he was anointed as a high priest. Paul was anointed as an apostle. I just wanted to pick some of the different offices or ministries into which these men were called. So that you may see that each of them, at the moment they were called, they received specific anointing for that. Let's see, for example, David. He was anointed David was anointed to be king over Israel and he was anointed three times. It's one of the strange cases in the Bible. He was anointed to be king over Israel three different times. It's strange. The first time he was anointed, he was still a teenager. He was anointed by Samuel the prophet, according to 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 12 and 13. You remember, the Lord sent the, Lord sent the prophet and said, Go to the house of Jesse in Bethlehem, because from his children, I have chosen one to be a king. You will anoint the one that I will tell you. And you, you know the story. He, he was a prophet. He, he was so inspired by the presence. And so handsome was the eldest one, so tall. And he wanted to pour down the oil on top of this man. And the Lord said, hey, wait for the one that I will tell you. That is not the one. The second, nothing. Third, until he told the old man, are they all your children? He said, well, almost. But uh, just the last one, he is taking care of the sheep. On the field. He said okay. You go and bring him in. Because we'll not start. All these things. Until he is here. When he came in. The Lord said. That's the one. Get up. 
anoint him. And he anointed him. Second time he was anointed when he became king over Judah. The men of Judah anointed him to be a king at that time when he was 30. That is written in 2 Samuel in chapter 2 and verses 4 to 7. And the third time King David was anointed by the elders of all Israel. Because at the beginning he started being a king just over Judah for seven years, says the word of God. After seven years, all the elders of Israel came to him and said, okay, we cannot continue like this. You were called by God. We heard the prophecy. We know all the Lord spoke. So you are the one to be the king. We want you to, at this day, to become the king of all of us. So they came together again and anointed him the third time. To be king over all Israel. So it's one of the strange cases in the Bible that speaks because the other kings they were anointed most of the times once and even the other ones but this man he was anointed three times what I want to see with you is that the result of this anointed upon David gave him victory because today we may speak on all this conference we are speaking about ministry there is no other uh, special subject for this conference, ministry, and the calling into ministry, and the specific ministries of God. This is a missionary conference. I say, this is a missionary conference. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say it again, this is a missionary conference. So the topic for this conference is ministry. But today we are saying and emphasizing how we need that anointing because this anointing upon David gave him victory. That is special anointing to be a king. Because I can just tell you of so many people who wanted to be kings and they never made it. Just give me a simple example. Absalom, he was David's son. He wanted to be a king. He gathered all the people. He offered the sacrifice. He did everything to be a king in the room of his father, David. He never made it. The Bible says he died in the first battle. Because for you to perform a ministry with real divine results, you need first the direct calling of God. And secondly, you need the special anointing of God for that office. Otherwise, you can do the function, but the results will not be there. The real results that you need come because of the anointing of God upon your life. Not because of how much you know. And it is good to know. It is good to study. It is good to train yourself. It is good to research. It is good. Everything is good. But the results in that ministry will not come because of how much you know. It is not because of how many seminars you have attended. It's not because of how many conferences you have attended. The results in your ministry will be there because of the speci specific anointed. 
the Lord will pour upon your life. When that anointing comes upon you for that specific office, you will get the results. You don't want to believe me, read the rest. That anointing gave him victory and made him the strongest king of Israel who extended the borders of the kingdom to the limits the Lord had promised beforehand. There were only two kings in Israel's history who reigned over all the land the Lord had promised to Abraham. Just two. The first one, David. And the second, Solomon, because he inherited that kingdom from his father. Just two kings who really reigned over all the land the Lord had promised to the people of Israel. And this was the man, this was the man who really achieved that. But it wasn't really him. It was the anointing of God that was upon him. Because he used to be just a shepherd. He was small. He wasn't born a king. He was a simple man. A countryman. Even his father didn't believe him. That is why he didn't call him for that meeting. When he killed Goliath, nobody believed he could kill the giant. He wasn't called into the army because the general didn't believe he was fit to go for war. Even his father, he just sent him as a messenger. Could you please go and take some tokens from your brothers and let me know that they are good. And the last one who never believed he could kill the giant was the giant himself. He said, are you coming against me with a staff and a stone? Am I a dog? So th those were the words of the giant. He imagined a little child trying to drive a dog out and said, do you think am I a dog? Are you coming against me with a staff? Come to me, said the giant. I will kill you. But the word of God says, and you know the story, David killed the giant. Because the anointing was upon him. What will kill the giant is not you. It is God when he anointed you for a specific thing, he will do it. But you need that anointing. How many of you understand that we need that anointing? Without the anointing, we are nothing. Without the anointing, it is just human strength. Without the anointing, it is just human skills. Without the anointing, you can do whatever you want and the results will be so poor. But when the anointing of God is upon you for a specific ministry, that anointing will make you achieve whatever the Lord has decided for you. Even if people despise you. Because normally, let me tell you, when you are called into ministry, don't expect people to congratulate you. When he calls you for specific things in life, don't expect people to be in agreement with you always. Someone will agree with you. But there will be some others. 
who will totally disagree and not only will disagree, they will oppose you. Not only disagree, they will oppose you. Some people think that ministry is something for us just to enjoy ourselves. Oh, I want to be a pastor like so and so. Oh, I want to be an evangelist. Oh, I want to be. Oh, they travel, they fly. Long hours on those planes. Oh, God. And they just stay hotels. Oh, oh, I love it. Hmm, wonderful. So there are the idea, there are the ideas of many people. And when they see someone bringing something to pastor, something, maybe a little cake, little, I don't know what, hamburger, whatever it is. And they just tell pastor, I want to invite you some food today. It is on me. Don't worry. And they see pastor going out and say, oh, Lord, that is mine. I want it. I love it. Woo. In the name of Jesus, Father. And they start asking themselves, anoint me to be a pastor. Oh, Father, anoint me to be a pastor of a large church. I want to be a pastor of a thousand people, of two thousand people. I want to be a pastor, oh, Lord. And Pastor Samuel, he speaks that English, though not that good, but he anyway, he does it. I want English. I want French. I want Arabic. I want, uh, I want to speak five, six languages. Oh, God. And he travels to Asia. I want to travel Asia. I want to travel Oceania. I want to travel Africa, Europe, all the, the, the whole world. Oh, God. They imagine that it is because of how many languages. It is not because of the many languages. It is not because of this or that. It is because God anointed David as a king that David became the strongest king in Israel history. And up to today, up to today, the flag, the banner of Israel carries the star of David. Up to today. Nobody can ignore David as a king of Israel because he was anointed in such a way that he split the history of Israel in two. But it wasn't him, it was God in him. It was the anointing. And you and I, we must long for the anointing of the Holy Ghost in ourselves. We should not be as worried for knowledge at, uh, as we should be for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. When you know you can do things good. But when the Holy Ghost is upon you. When God anoints you for something. God will be doing the things that you can't do. Even if you don't know how to speak in the case of Moses. He will give you somebody to speak in your place. Even if you don't know how to speak properly a language. But the Lord wants you to do something. I always, I always get amazed in my own case. I always get amazed. I know I've been studying this. But I started studying too late. I was 30. 30. When I took my first English book in my hands. When I went for my first lesson to learn the language. I was 30. My teachers told me, some of my superiors in the church told me, you will never achieve the goal you want. They told me, you will be able to move. Yes, you study, you are interested. You will be able to move around. You will be able to travel. You will be able to order the restaurant. You will be able to, you know, at home, on the streets. But, but as for you to give a speech... On the pulpit, both of them told me, you are too late, my brother. You will never make it. Because for a person to reach that level, that is what they told me. Even my teachers at the institute, they told me, for a person to reach that level, 
that he may feel free to express his mind in a full speech one hour or whatever the time is. The person must start not older than five, six, seven. When it is ten, we consider it's, it's becoming late. They should be children. And then they will achieve that level. I'm not saying anything about my wisdom. I'm not saying anything about my intelligence. I just did what the Lord told me. Because I know that I am here helping with you in this because I'm not the boss of anything. People sometimes they call the titles that you may carry when they give you responsibility. I'm not the boss of anybody. I'm not the boss of this conference. I'm not the boss of this project. No. I am a helper with you in all what is going on. You help, I help. My help is not the same as your help. Because I cannot compare myself to the teachers. When it comes to the teaching, I always tell the students, don't ask me. I'm not a teacher. I don't know how to teach. I am not in that level. My only part in the teaching project is to encourage them and to tell them, do it because God is with you. Do it because the Lord will bless you. Do it because the Lord is able to do a miracle. I don't promise you anything, but God is able to do a miracle. That is my only part when it comes to the teaching. Or was some of you come to the conferences and ask me, Pastor, I want to organize something like this project in the local church by me. What can I do? I say, what you can do is to go to the ones who know about it. I don't know about it. And I just refer them to the teachers or the instructors that come. Because every conference normally, even the instructors that come from abroad, they will help us. They will guide us. Plus the other ones who are in the local church and in other places. I just direct them to them. And I tell them, ask them. They know how to. I don't know anything about it. Because I, I cannot put myself in that place. I am not a teacher. Every day I tell the teachers in church and tell the instructors from abroad. Please, when you hear me, I know that I make a lot of mistakes in my pronunciation. Correct me. And I am open-minded. Yes, correct me. Many times I make mistakes. I just remember and laugh at myself. But what is doing the thing is not me, is not my knowledge. Really, it is not my knowledge. I don't have that. I cannot boast about knowledge in the language. The only thing I can do is to trust the Lord and to remember that the Lord anoints people for specific things in life and no matter your, how do you say, hindrances, no matter your limitations, it is not you, it is the anointing that God will pour upon your life for something special that will do, God himself will do. How do you hear? Because our, our fear always is pastor. And especially during these conferences, because people, they are always asking, Pastor, um, do you think that the, my way I handle the language is enough for me to do this or that? I say, I don't know. But if it is the Lord, for sure he will do. For sure he will do. 
Amen. Because it is more, it is more than the knowledge. It is the anointing. And it is the anointing that the Lord poured upon David that made him the, the strongest king in Israel's history. And he extended the limits of the kingdom to the borders the Lord had told beforehand. The question may arise, who really anointed Aaron? Well, in that part of the scriptures, Leviticus number 8 and uh, verse 12, it relates the moment when the Lord commanded Aaron to be anointed. And uh, then the description in the book of Psalm in chapter 133 is just the way that the uh, the anointed came upon him. It says in the chapter 8 and verse 12, and he poured of the anointing oil upon Aaron's head and anointed him to sanctify him. Again, and he poured the, of the anointing oil upon Aaron's head and anointed him to sanctify him. It is the first high priest in Israel's history. Remember that the, we were studying yesterday that they had to be constituted as a nation. And so therefore they now have their first high priest. It was the very time. Who anointed Aaron? Since there was not any for um, to do it in the priestly line, that commandment came to Moses. And it was Moses. It says, in verse 10, and Moses took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and all that was therein and sanctified them. And in verse 12, he says, and he poured of the anointing oil upon Aaron's head. So the one, I mean, humanly speaking, the one who poured down the oil of the anointing upon Aaron's head was Moses. Why? Because there was no previous high priest in Israel because it is the time when they are constituted as a nation when they were in the wilderness. But the, the description of how this anointing came upon him is right there in Psalm when we read, and uh, I love it. I love it because... It describes not only for Aaron, but it describes the anointing, how it comes upon anybody that is anointed by God. Look, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And then, it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the bird, even Aaron's bird, that went down to the skirts of his garments. It is so important. The description, first thing it says, that it was precious ointment. There was no other ointment like that in Israel. Nobody else could at any time dare to use, not even to make an ointment like this special ointment. It was given by God just for the anointing of this high priest. If somebody else 
there at any time to use that ointment, he would be cut off. And that speaks about the anointing of the Holy Ghost. That will tell you that the anointing the Lord pours upon anybody, in this case upon you, if at any time the Lord calls you for a specific ministry, the anointing that you will receive is nothing likely to the things that is upon somebody else. It's specific for that office. It's specific for that office. The anointing of God for everybody is so accurate. It is not the same to be a pastor than to be an evangelist. To be a pastor is something. To be an evangelist is something different. Pastors normally, normally, they are most of the time at the same place with the same people, dealing with them, helping them as Psalm 23 says, just leading them to the still waters, just giving them some nice green pastures and help them to develop in their spiritual relationship with God that they may grow and in due time, God may have right before him a complete uh, congregation that he may pick from them to continue doing the same. The rest of the ones who are not called to come into full-time ministry anyway, they are prepared by God to be as one man doing the global office of the church, which is to reach out to the lost. Then, the first thing is that this is a precious ointment. Second thing, it came upon the head, but it was not a little bit. It just came upon the head and ran down upon the beard. And I imagine this the first time I was, because normally today when we see the anointing of the ministers, we do it in a polite way. Put a little oil right here. And if this oil runs a little bit, somebody will be right there helping that just stay there. No more. Don't run down. This one was the opposite. This one was the opposite. This man had to receive a complete shower of oil upon his life. It was oil on the head, oil running down the bed, which means your whole face. It was, and it didn't stop there. It just continues going, the shirt, jacket, and everything, even the robe. It is to the border. To the skirts of his garment, it was big ball of oil. It wasn't just this, and it was something big enough because God wanted to make sure that this man who was anointed at that time was conscious that there was a real anointing upon him. And it was nothing to wipe out from him. He was glad because the, the psalm says that he was glad. Behold how good and how pleasant it is. And then this complete bowl of oil poured upon the head, ran down the face, the bird, the shirt, the jacket, and everything up to the skirts of the garment. He was completely involved with that oil. And nobody wanted to wipe out anything. He wanted to make sure I was anointed. I have the oil of the anointing upon my life. And that will give you an idea of how you should love and wish and long for the anointing of God upon your life. Not just the head, not just the bird, but your whole life, top to bottom. 
Amen. And it says, it is as the dew of Hermon. What is the dew of Hermon? Well, for the ones who have studied, Hermon was a mount in what is called Lebanon now. And uh, from the top, because it, it was so tall and up there was type of sometimes ice and sometimes snow. And the winds used to blow and bring some of this dew during the nights. So the flatlands at the foot of Mount Hermon received that dew and that dew would make that land suffer time. And it's exactly what the word of God is saying here. When the anointing of God is really upon you, it is like the dew of Hermon. The wind will blow and will bring down upon you such capacity to produce that people, they be amazed. That they may be amazed when they see how come that is what happened to the apostles when they went to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And upon, upon them came that blessing. And then the Bible says that the high priest and all the priests of the Jewish people, they wonder and said, are not these the people from Galilee? Where did they learn letters? Are not they fishermen? The Bible says they were amazed at the way they used to speak after the Holy Ghost came upon them. And they were given testimony and witnessing about the Lord Jesus Christ. And they were amazed. They said, how come these people are not these Galileans? Are not these the fishermen? How come they speak like this? Because the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon your head should run down your face and down your whole body and cover you totally so that something really may happen in you. And it would be like the dew of Hermon upon the mounds of Zion will make your whole land fertile for the glory of God. People of God, we need the Holy Ghost in ourselves. Ministers, we need the Holy Ghost upon ourselves. Sometimes we are barren. Sometimes we don't produce enough. Because we are missing sometimes the most important thing in ourselves. Sometimes we have been so worried about getting more and more things from now, from down here. But we have been missing to long for the anointing, the fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost upon ourselves. Let that oil continue running down your head and your face and your beard. Let that fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost continue covering your whole being. Not only your spirit, but your spirit, your soul, your body. All your being. If we don't have it, it's going to be really hard. But praise God for that. Aaron's anointing was so wonderful. This anointing established him to perform the high priestly ministry the rest of his lifespan, approximately 40 years. How can you perform a ministry for such a long time and perform it in a good way and you know how many people wanted to rebel against Aaron? We have some few lines there. Because ministry is not for free. When you are involved in ministry, some other people wish what you have. Some other people wish 
your blessing. Because when someone is anointed for something directly from God, there is something in that person that makes somebody else to wish that, to long for it. And sometimes people at least would come near to, trying to come close to, to see if something that is in him comes upon me. Do you remember the case of the apostles? The Bible says they went down to Samaria because some people there had received the gospel and they were baptized. Among them, there was a man who used to be a sorcerer, a magician. And he was glad and now he forgot about these things and he came and was The Bible says he was with Philip, the one who was preaching. When the apostles came, Peter and John, they laid hands on the people and everybody who received that blessing that they laid hands on them, everybody was baptized and received the Holy Ghost on their lives. It was so wonderful. Not a single one missed the anointing. When Peter and Paul laid hands on them, Everyone was receiving the Holy Ghost. And then this magician that said now was a member of the church. He told them, I want what you have. How can I get it? Well, let me see. He took out his wallet. Checked. And said, I will give you such and such an amount of money. And please, give me that same gift that whosoever I let my hands upon may receive the Holy Ghost as well. So when you have something, somebody else will long for it. But not only will long for it, some other people, they will try to move you out of the stage so that they may replace you. That is something that happens normally in life. And uh, for the amazement of many, it will happen in church and in ministry as well. Yes? Why are you looking at me like that? Yes, it will happen. If the Lord anoints you, With a special anointing. In a direct calling. And he is manifesting himself through you. Some people will wish. What you have. Some other ones will long for it. And some other ones will try to move you out of the stage. So that they may be prophets in your place. Do you understand that? Are you prepared for that? <laughs> Whenever you ask from God something special, remember that it is a all-included package. So it's good for you to know it. Because at least when you know it, You don't be so bitter. You will go to the Lord. Lord, here am I. I'm not doing this because I wanted to. You are the one who caught me and put me to do this. So I come back to you. What else can I do, Lord? Whatever you want, you do it. I'm not ready to fight anybody. If I am here, it is because you put me here. Somebody wants to move me. Is it you, Father, who is moving me? Because we must be even open-minded in that case. No, no, it is not me. Okay, Lord, then you take charge of the situation. And he will take charge. That happened. Numbers chapter 17. 
Aaron's ministry was challenged. During the rebellion of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, and the Lord himself proved that he had anointed and had given full support to Aaron's ministry when he made the rod of Aaron's to blossom. Because the rebellion of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram was a rebellion because of ministry. And uh, Moses had to come in front and speak with them. Do you want also the ministry? Who is Aaron that you rebel against him? Who am I that you rebel against me? Tomorrow, said Moses, the Lord will show he is his horn. And you know, that happened during the rebellion. And after the rebellion, because you know how many people died during the rebellion? Because they were challenging Aaron's ministry. They were challenging not only Aaron, even Moses. Many people died. Then after that, the Lord said, call the princes. Let them bring each of them a rod. Mark them. Levi, Judah, Benjamin, and so on. And for the Levi house, you will write Aaron. Put these things, these rods, in the place by the Ark of the Covenant. Leave them there. And tomorrow, the rod that is blossomed, it will be the confirmation for whom I have chosen for the ministry. Next day when he came and all the princes there, he took out all the rods. And the Bible says, Aaron's rod had blossomed. And even bore some fruits. And then everybody took their own rods, went away and said, no way. Aaron. It is God. That is what we need the anointing of God upon ourselves. Because without that anointing, everybody that is ready to challenge you, without that anointing, they are going to prevail against you. Are you with me? Without that anointing, it's really dangerous to enter into ministry. Try to perform this ministry without the anointing of God is really hard. Because when the time comes and somebody is going to challenge that ministry, you will not have the full support because ministry, full-time ministry, specific ministries given by the Lord, yes, they are a blessing. But as I told you beforehand, they are an all-included package that many people don't think about. And many people want the things that you are doing. Many people, they want the blessing that you are enjoying. And when I say blessing, I'm not referring just to money. Money is something that is just... But I'm speaking about the blessings from on high. Even if you come in front and the Lord anoints you as a preacher and you preach under that anointing of the Holy Ghost, many other people would like that anointing for themselves. And if people want to... Just invite you as a preacher because God gave you grace. There would be some 
who would like to stop on the way, you're coming to that place. They are not interested. Why are they, why aren't they interested in that? Because they want what you have. And they are not glad that the Lord is doing these great things with you. Are you with me? So the anointing of the Holy Ghost is really important, my brothers. Maybe you know it for a long time. Yes, me too. But when we came here for this conference, we didn't come because we don't know. Because see, if, it, if it is for knowledge, you don't have to come here. Because you already know a lot of things. We came here for the Lord to refresh our memories. For the Lord to refresh our spirits. For the Lord to give us a fresh anointing and desire that we may continue serving God. Because remember, when I see all these bunch of young people here, many young people, I see adult people as well. I'm not ignoring the ones who are adult people. But I see a whole bunch of young people here. I know that God is doing something special. And I know the Lord has drawn a huge plan for humanity in these end times. And uh, I know there would be countries where we will see, I don't know which countries, but there will be countries where we will see these large congregations like here, WMM churches, in full English services, with the whole anointing of God, reaching not only the local place, but extending, reaching out to other places. Because I, when I see, I must always wonder, I say, why? Venezuelan people, Colombian people, Ecuadorian people, Latin American people, Studying and learning, because it is not only studying, it's studying and learning. And being made fluent by the Spirit of God, because there is no other way to do it. I don't know if you agree, but I am totally sure it is the Spirit of God. There is no way, because I studied at the Institute, there is no way. That somebody study a language for six, eight, or ten months, even two years, going two hours Friday, I mean Monday to Friday, and that in those ten or eighteen months, they really be fluent and they really get a good accent. It's a, a real struggle, it's something different. But how come we say, some people came here to inquire about the school and they asked where the school works. We didn't have a proper place for the school. You go to Venezuela, where that school works? Some, some, not, not only sometimes, many times, you don't have the proper place. And when you ask who are the teachers, you could laugh. You could laugh. Some of our teachers here, 13 years old, 15 years old. What? Yes. 13 years, yes, 13 years old. What? Are they a teachers? Yes, they are teachers. But how come are they just teachers? No, they are students. How come you dare to put the students to teach? There are no more teachers. They are the only teachers we have. It is not our choice. 
Some of them, they are more than 13 and 15. But you can have the same experience in different places. Not only here, but Venezuela. I have learned about these schools of languages suddenly spread. You will have this experience here, Venezuela, Peru, Ecuador. Many places have come to, and they tell me, Pastor, we are doing something here. We have a school. You go to see the school? Just in a little hall, three, four, five people get together and suddenly it becomes 10, 12, and they start speaking the language. Last night I was talking to a young girl. She told me in English, Pastor, I'm studying the language. For well, how long? Eight months, Pastor. And I feel good. I say, okay, may God bless you. She told me, Pastor, but I started speaking Russian. I said, what? Which city do you live? She told me, and I asked her, uh, there is any Russian speaking person there to teach you? She said, no, I'm studying by myself. And may make it sure that if it is the Lord, you will see that person speaking Russian by herself. Because it is not the teacher. It is not the 13 year old teacher. It is not the adult person. It is not the ability. It is the anointing of the most high upon somebody and upon a project. Even I myself at this age started studying French. You can laugh at me. I don't worry. I am accustomed to it. But I said, I want to at least say hello. God bless you. How are you? Few things, at least few things, because sometimes I have to cross some countries where their language is French. Why not? At least to say bonjour. At least that you can communicate a little thing. Or that you can repeat John 3.16. Something. Huh? Because if you can learn how to say it, it's good. But if it is the Holy Ghost telling you, you must enter through this way, you should enter that way. I know that the anointing of the Holy Ghost is upon anybody that he has chosen for something. And if he has signaled you, if he has pointed at you for something in your life, make sure that the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And then if it is for the language, he will teach you the language. I'm totally sure. Because I have seen a lot of examples in different places where I have come to. And many people call La Concordia. I say, why? Do, they call and say, Pastor, can you teach us and organize ourselves here? Well, well, whatever we have, we can share with you, but we are not specialized in anything. We have some two or three professional teachers here. The rest of them are students who are already students and already teaching. We can't do anything else. Services. Because. Because the Lord put in our hearts. And why do you hold services in English, Pastor? We hold services in English because there are many people around the world. You heard the list of countries that we read last night and even this morning. United Kingdom. Australia, New Zealand, Kenya in Africa, Netherlands, Europe, United Kingdom, USA. People is waiting for this. How can you stop this? You didn't come to this conference just to get more knowledge. You came here to this conference for the Lord to speak to yourself. Because a single word from the throne of God to you will change you forever. 
A single word from the throne of God for you will change you forever. Will change your destiny. It means the rest of your life will have a direction from God. And that is what you came looking for. I don't know if you are sure about it. But that is my own case. I am here together with you. And I am always hoping for a straight direction of the Lord from me. Because during this type of Bible studies or conferences, whatever you want to call them. What we are looking for is which of these words is the word for me. Right? Because you can go outside there. You can study. You can go to university. You can do your career. You, everything. But there is a purpose of God. There is a plan of the Lord. And on all these youth and adult people who are here, the Lord may be pointing at some of them. Maybe you. I don't know. I'm not God. Maybe the Lord will point to you and say, you, maybe you never imagined. Maybe you never wish that. You never long for ministry. For the amazement of many people. The Lord has called people who never wanted to be in ministry. It was the case of Moses. No Lord, not me. No Lord, not me. Send somebody else. I, it's not me. I'm not interested. I'm, I don't know how to speak. They will say, hey, come on. It is you. So for the amazement of many people, the Lord has involved into ministry people who never long for it. And some people have Desire to quit in ministry. That is the story of Jeremiah. Lord, I will not speak anymore in your name. That is a whole problem for me. Anytime I open my mouth is to cry, violence is coming. Violence is coming. Sword is coming. I'm not interested in this. Even my friends, they are just waiting for my fall. Oh God, I'm not interested in this. I will not speak anymore in your name. But the word of God says, but suddenly there was a fire. The anointing. <laughs> that suddenly there was a fire in my bones. And I tried to stand it. I couldn't. So I have to continue speaking again. Violence is coming. Violence is coming. Disorder is coming. You see the anointing of the Holy Ghost is what you need. How many of you understand this? The anointing of the Holy Ghost is what you need. Don't dare to leave this place tomorrow without making sure that you long for the anointing of the Holy Ghost in your life. Because if you leave this place without longing for that anointing of the Holy Ghost, you came and you got a little knowledge, a little conference, but you will not have the things that are real valuable in yourself. Even as a student, you need the anointing. You know, when the people told me that I couldn't learn the language because of my age, I remembered my dreams. Because I am not in this because I wanted. I was 14 when the Lord baptized me with the Holy Ghost. And to my amazement, I learned when I was 20 that when I used to speak in tongues, I used to speak in tongues in English. I never knew any English, so I didn't know anything. I came to know it when I met somebody from USA. And he heard me praying and inquired, where did you learn English? I said, no, I don't know. He insisted and I said, no, I don't know. Then he realized because he was a minister as well. Oh, that's why. 
But not only, not only that, I used to dream, and in my dreams, nobody used to speak about this in our churches. Missionary conference in English? No, not at all. Anybody who encouraged our Latin American people? Not at all. But somehow I started dreaming when I was 15, 16, 17, up to 20 and something. I was dreaming during my nights. And every time I was dreaming, I was going around the world preaching the gospel. And my preaching was in English. I didn't know any English. But I know that in my dreams I was speaking English. And they gave me the names of the countries, the names of the cities. Everything was for me right there. It is the anointing. And then when they told me, you cannot learn the language. You know what I used to do? In the morning time, I used to get up really early to pray. And I used to lay hands on myself. One hand on my Bible, English Bible, another hand on my head. Lord, put all these things inside here. Put it in the back of my brain. Lord, I ask you to please put all your word right here in my brain. Make it automatic of other. Give me fluency by your Holy Ghost. Lord, help me to increase my listening comprehension. And I was praying for all these things all the days. I think my wife had to be a little worried at that time. I was kind of mad. But when someone tell me you cannot and the Lord is telling you, yes, you will, then you must go to him. Because if he said, yes, you will, then it is a matter of believing him and cry for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Lord, give me anointing by your Holy Spirit upon my life that I may speak that language, that I may do whatever you told me that I would do. And I get so in inspired, excited when I speak this word, when I go those places, not, not, not as much as I do here, but I get so inspired. I get the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I may preach this word of God, not because of I got any knowledge. I'm totally sure that my dreams became truth because of the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon my life. And when I go, I don't go the countries I want to. I go the countries the Lord want to. Because I cannot go to the places I love. I must go to the places the Lord says. And whenever it is the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon you, then you will do. Are you interested in this? This conference is all about ministry. Are you interested in this? Do you want the Lord to anoint you? I'm asking you a question. Do you want the Lord to anoint you? Are you really, are you really longing for the anointing of the Lord for this in you? Because he can do it. I tell you that he can do it. Not necessarily everybody will be called to learn English as their main second language. Because the Lord may have here some people whom he has called to learn English. French as the main second language. Yes, because he needs French. He needs French-speaking people as well, and some of the people could be led by the Holy Ghost to learn Russian or Arabic. Why not? 
the whole world is in a great need so i don't know but he knows and you know because god is dealing with you never hesitate in asking the lord to anoint you as he anointed all these people today i want to pray with you and i want to ask the lord to give a special anointing upon the ones who really love it and the ones who know god has pointed their lives for something If you want to come in front, you may come in front. If you don't want to come in front, you may stand right there or you may kneel down, but whatever it is, I want to pray. Not only today, but I will continue praying because God has to do something and the Lord brought us here to do something. Mission field is waiting for the people whom the Lord has chosen. The whole world is in a great need and we could be